In this tutorial, I will show you how to create a new custom tool using Toolkit. Toolkit allows you to create and design custom tools. To create a tool, you must have the correct service interface definition file, or SID file for short, for each network device you want to communicate with. SID files are used to describe all of the unique parameters, functions and permissions of the device's application. If you are creating a custom tool for a Woodward device and were not provided with a SID file, you will need to acquire one from Woodward or a Woodward dealer or packager, depending on who created the device application. In order to create tools, you need to purchase the developer license level. To create a tool, I will press the new button from the main ribbon tab. Tools can be created even if not connected to a device, however, all the components will remain in a grayed out state until connected. Now, I must select a SID. If the SID I want to use is not in the list, I can click the SID file locations button to add the folder path of the desired SID file. In this case, I will use the search box to find the SID in the list. I will choose the test drag drop element SID. I am now in design mode and have a design tab on the main window ribbon. Also, there is now a design tools window from which I can select elements to add to my tool. The Design Tools window contains a Components tab that lists all of the device's parameters and functions from the SID as well as several generic components that can be added. The Tool Explorer tab shows the hierarchy of all the elements in a tool. A tool is essentially a collection of devices and views. Each view contains a collection of pages and each page contains individual user components like buttons, text boxes etc. Devices in a tool represent the physical devices that the tool will be used for. To begin, I will add a basic component to the tool by selecting the desired parameter from the Components tab. I can click the mouse and drag the parameter to the page and place it in the desired position. Then release the mouse button. When a basic component like this is added to a page, it is automatically grouped in a parameter group, and as you can see, the group is selected. I can change the size of the group by using the mouse to click and drag the grab handles around it. I can change the position by clicking and dragging the position marker on the group. On the Tool Explorer tab of the Design Tools window, you can see the newly added component in the hierarchy, as well as the properties of the selected component. Each component type has its own set of properties that can be changed to customize it. For instance, I can change the title of the group. I can also change the properties of a component by clicking on the Smart tag in the upper right corner of the component. Here, you will see the same properties. Now I will add more parameters to this group. You can see as I drag the parameter to the group, I can select the position. Each row in the group can also be customized. First I will select the row, then I can see the properties for that row in the Tool Explorer. I can also select multiple components by holding the control key down while clicking on each item. Only the properties that are common to all the selected components will be shown. I can then change any of the common properties and all of the selected components will change at once. Parameters in the components listing can be presented in alternative ways. To demonstrate this, I will add a gauge to the page by clicking on the arrow icon next to the parameter's name. In the pop-up, I will select the round gauge component by clicking and dragging it to the page. The list of alternative components changes based on the data type of the parameter. For instance, if I select a Boolean parameter, I get a different list of components from a numeric data type. Some component types allow multiple parameters to be added to them similar to the parameter group. The trend chart is one of those components.
To add additional parameters, I just need to drag them over the existing chart and release the mouse. I can also copy and paste components on a page. There are numerous ways to copy and paste. First I select the component to copy. Then I can use the buttons on the ribbon. Or, I can use the keyboard shortcuts, Ctrl C for copy, and Ctrl V for paste. I can also hold the control key down while clicking and dragging the component. The undo and redo buttons on the ribbon allow me to undo any number of operations that are performed. Clicking the arrow on the button shows a list of the previous operations. To save what I've done so far, I will click the Save button from the main ribbon tab. It is a good idea to save often as you build your tool. So far, I have only made changes to one page, but I can add additional pages to a tool. I can add a page from the Design ribbon, or the Tool Explorer. I can also create a hierarchy of pages and folders to help organize the tool. I will rename the pages and you will see the changes reflected in the page navigation drop down. When building a tool, I can add a custom settings editor. Settings are the writable parameters in the device whose values are stored in a file. When a settings file is opened, the appropriate editor will be used to view the file. You can learn more by reading the Working with Settings Help Topic and Settings Tutorial. To create a custom settings editor, I will select the settings editor's item in the Tool Explorer and click New. Next, I will select the SID file to build the settings editor from. If your tool supports multiple versions of the device's application, you will need to create a custom editor for each version and select the appropriate SID file for each one. Now I can create pages and add components like I showed when creating the online view. Typically, you will only add writable components to a settings editor page, since read-only device parameters will not be in a settings file. For instance, I wouldn't want to add an LED component to a settings editor page because it doesn't allow editing of the value. I can also create page hierarchies in settings editors.
If your tool supports multiple versions of the device's application, you may want to create a view for each version. Upon connecting to the device, Toolkit will select the appropriate view to display, based on the matching SID identifiers between the device and the view. To add a view, first select the Views item in the Tool Explorer. Then, click the New button. By default, the new view is associated with the same SID file as the first view. To change this, I will need to select the new view and choose the appropriate SID file for this view. Then click Add. In this case, I do not want to associate any other SIDs so I will remove the first SID. Now I can begin adding pages and components to the new view, by first selecting a page in the new view. Then selecting the Components tab. Notice how the device selection drop-down shows the different SID that I set for this view, and the list of available parameters is different. I can also add a component that is not tied to a specific parameter in the application, like a label. This is useful if you want to add some text or headings on the page. I will add a label component to help identify this view. When you have multiple views in a tool, Toolkit will not know which view to display until connected to a device. In this case, Toolkit will display the home page upon opening the tool. Notice how each view has a home page by default. This home page is actually shared between all of the views in the tool. If I add a component to the home page from any view, it will be available in every view. Only components not tied to a device parameter can be added to the home page. Adding a label, for instance, to the home page, will show up for each view. When trying to add a parameter-based component, Toolkit displays the no symbol and will not add the component. Now that I have multiple views, I will demonstrate how the switching works by connecting to different devices. First I will save and close the tool. Then I will reopen the tool. Notice how only the home page is visible. Now I will connect to the device that matches the first view in the tool. Toolkit automatically switched to the first view in the tool. Now I will disconnect and reconnect to a device that matches the second view in the tool. Toolkit automatically switched to the second view. Toolkit has the ability to connect to multiple devices on a network at once. You can build your tool to support this scenario by adding multiple tool devices to the tool. First, I will re-enter design mode by clicking the design mode button on the ribbon. Then select the tool devices item in the tool explorer and click new. 
Now I will select a SID for this new device. For this demonstration I will choose the same SID that I have used for device 1. This means that the two devices on the network must be running the same application. If devices on the network are different, then I would need to select the appropriate SID for each device. I can also rename the devices to give them a more meaningful name. You can see that the second device is associated with both views in the tool. Now I will add some components from parameters of the second device. On the Components tab, I will need to select the second device from the device dropdown. Then I can add components. Notice that the default name contains the second device name. Also, the device name property of the component shows the second device. I can always reassociate any component with a different device if needed, here. Now I will go to run mode and connect to a device. By default, the first tool device is bound to the connected device. This means only those components mapped to device 1 will be connected. I can change the bound device by clicking on the connection details button and choosing a different tool device binding. Now you can see only the second device components are connected. When multiple physical devices are connected, you will need to bind each physical device with the appropriate tool device. See the toolkit help for more information on tool device bindings. Each tool has a set of tool properties that can be viewed and modified. Select the tool properties item in the tool explorer. These properties apply to the entire tool. Among them is where you can select a help file that you create for your tool. Help files can be either compiled HTML or PDF files. I will choose a test HTML help file for this demonstration. Now that a help file is defined, a tool help icon will show up on the view ribbon. I can also assign help topics in the file to components. For instance, I can select the component and set its help properties to point to a specific topic in the help file. Then in run mode, I can right click on the component to bring up the topic automatically. This can also be done with PDF help files. This concludes the tutorial on creating a tool. Thanks for watching.